Reflections. Let's talk about reflections. And I'm going to deal with reflections in terms of trigonometric functions. But first of all, I just want to go through a quick little tutorial of what reflections are and how we use them. So remember, there's a couple things. When we had a function, and in this case, I have my function as f of x, or as square root of x. Let's write this as f of x here. When I took my function and I multiplied it by a negative number, like in this case, if I have f of x equals negative square root of x, that is going to be a reflection about the x-axis. And then if I took my function and then I put a negative, I multiplied it by a negative inside the function, that was a reflection about the y-axis. So let's take a look at what these two graphs would look like. So first of all, let's graph So there we go. That's what that one, and that's what that would look like. So it's either outside or inside the function. So the graph function f of x, or square root of x, looks something like this. So if I was going to reflect that over the x-axis, I would have a function that looks like that. So this is f of x equals negative square root of x. And then if I was going to reflect it about the y-axis, it would look something like this. So that is f of x equals square root of negative x. So it's important for us to understand when we're, when we're multiplying by a negative number and if it's inside or outside of our function. But we're not going to be dealing with the square root of x. We are going to have to remember these two, uh, these two definitions and reflections. But what I want to talk about right now is the cosine function. So let's take about f of x, let's say f of x equals cosine of x. And what I want to do is I want to look at the reflection, particularly just the x-axis reflection of the cosine of x. And I want to also relate it to, um, I also want to relate it to your, um, uh, I don't even know what I was going to say anymore. Well, let's draw a little table. So to first start off with the graph, let's get over with our x and our f of x. Now, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to work with the first period in the positive direction of the cosine function. So I'm going to work with a couple points. First point is 0. Then we're going to work with pi over 2. Then we have pi, 3 pi over 2, and then 2 pi. So when we look at the angle at 0, we know that the cosine function is equal to negative 1, right? The y coordinate on that unit circle is equal to negative 1. At pi over 2, we have 0. At pi, cosine is equal to negative 1. Uh, I'm sorry, at 0, cosine is equal to 1. No wonder I'm starting to lose it. 0, then at pi, cosine is equal to negative 1. At cosine of 3 pi over 2, we're equal to 0 again. And at cosine of 2 pi is equal to 1. Now, let's see what would happen if I was going to now multiply this. So this is the cosine of x. But what happens if I multiplied that now by a negative 1? So let's see now what my function would look like. So this is going to be negative f of x. So I stand again 0. I would still get 1. But now 1 times negative 1 gives me negative 1. 0 would still be 0. Now negative 1 times negative 1 is going to give me positive 1. 0 would be 0, and then I'm left with negative 1. So what you can see is I'm going to graph these in a second, but each one of these values has been totally negated. Now the next thing is let's actually go back through. Might as well try. Let's look at the cosine of negative x. Now hopefully you remember when we were talking about even and odd functions. And what you should notice is that cosine, remember, is an even function, just like f of x squared. But so when you take the negative x squared, you're going to get back out x squared. So the function cosine of negative x, you should remember, is equal to the cosine of x. So therefore, I'm actually going to have symmetry over my y-axis. So the cosine of negative x is actually not going to have an effect on my graph at all. But let's take a look at our reflection of Let's take a look at the reflection that we have with negative 1. 
So I'm going to graph the first quadrant here. And first thing I'm going to do is graph the cosine of x. So in graphing the cosine of x, I go up to 1 at 0. My next point is pi over 2. Then I go to pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. So graphing these points, I get to 0, negative 1 and 1, go down to negative 1, back up to 0, back up to pi. Graphing these points. Now, if I want to graph the function negative cosine of x, by plotting these points at my function is 0, instead of being at 1, now it's at negative 1. But at 0, it's still going to have the same x-intercept. But now, at pi over 2, it goes at pi over 2, it's at 0. And then at pi, it's at 1. Then at 3 pi over 2, it's back down to 0. And then finishes off its period down at negative 1. So this is our function of negative cosine of x. So it's important for you to understand, when we're kind of talking going back with your period, one thing is when you have a function being multiplied where your amplitude is negative, you're going to have an, a uh, reflection over your x-axis. So remember we talked about amplitude was your value that you're multiplying by your function. If that value ends up being negative, you're going to have a reflection over the x-axis. And then we'll get into later a little bit more talking about periods and stuff. But when you have your negative inside the function, that's going to be reflection over the y-axis. However, cosine, since it's reciprocal or um, a reflexive over the y-axis, we're not actually going to be able to or view kind of how that uh, symmetry would work so, or how it would actually change the graph because it's going to be symmetrical. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's reflection with the graphs.